I think the first key point is that although these drugs don't re require routine monitoring, there are certain special situations where laboratory measurement is very useful and sometimes where you really need the result right away. And unfortunately, there are not a lot of new developments. The big problem we have right now is that the very best assays for measuring these drugs are not widely available. And that the assays that are widely available, the prothrombin time, the activated partial thromboplastin time, are not able to measure drugs, nor are they able to rule out clinically significant levels of drugs. So in other words, if a patient comes into the emergency room with uh, requires an emergency surgery, they're taking one of these drugs, you order a PT and a PTT, they're normal. The normal re result does not exclude the possibility of clinically relevant, relevant levels of drug in circulation. And you really want these specialized assays, but they're not widely available. So I, I really see this as a call to action to our community to try to find a way to bring assays that are able to me measure these drugs into clinics, into emergency rooms, into hospitals everywhere so that we can take care of patients when they present in a situation like this. Idariasizumab was recently approved by the FDA and actually even more recently approved in Europe for the uh, reversal of dabigatran, a direct thrombin inhibitor. And this is really an exciting development in our field. For the first time, we are able to essentially turn off an oral anticoagulant like a light switch. We know that within minutes of infusion of this drug, uh, the coagulation uh, parameters are corrected. Uh, so I do think that this is a, a real game changer in our field. When patients present, for example, who are taking dabigatran and require an urgent or emergent procedure, we are able to give them this agent and turn off anticoagulation quickly. Um, there are agents that are being developed as well for reversal of the direct factor 10A inhibitors, rivaroxaban, apixaban, and adoxaban. Uh, one of the uh, drugs, Indexinet Alpha, I understand that the licensing application is being submitted to the FDA for this drug this month in December, and so we're very excited about in the future potentially having a reversal agent for those drugs as well. Practical issues around adiracizumab are really important, and to be honest with you, it's so new. I think it was approved by the FDA on October 16th and hit the shelves several weeks later that I still think we're learning about sort of these practical and logistical issues. My understanding is that the, uh, the wholesale acquisition, acquisition cost is about 3,500 US dollars for this drug. Um, so it, is, it, isn't, it isn't cheap, but I think most, most centers are able to afford that and stock it on their shelves uh, so that they can use it in, the, in case of an emergency. It's not likely that this drug will be needed often, so most institutions won't need to have many vials on hand, but it is probable that um, most institutions will want to have a small number available for emergencies. Um, my understanding is that the manufacturer has said that this drug has a shelf life of 24 months, so it can be kept for a while. Um, that said, different jurisdictions, that, you know, different regulatory agencies may impose their own limitations on how long the drug can be used before it expires. There are some key questions and uh, problems that we need to address in the fields of both laboratory measurement and reversal of the direct oral anticoagulants. If we start with laboratory measurement, I think the key problem is that the best assays are not widely available and the assays that we have available to us have really important limitations. So I think again, this is a real call to action for our community to try to find a way to bring good assays into a place where we can access them on an emergent basis um, across large and small institutions. In terms of the reversal area, I think there are some really important questions and outstanding issues that remain. Um, the first regarding idariacizumab is that although we know that this drug rapidly reverses the coagulation effects of dabigatran, we don't actually know whether it improves outcomes in patients who present with serious bleeding. And so we need more data on that, on that, on that issue. Um, interestingly, um, the data show that with idariacizumab, about 12 to 24 hours after it's given, we start to begin to see detection of dabigatran levels again. There seems to be an, an increase uh, at around 12 to 24 hours after infusion of the drug. We don't yet understand whether that's clinically significant, whether it means that certain patients may be at risk for re-bleeding and would benefit from a redosing of the idariacizumab. So that's another area that we need to investigate.